Jennifer Ertman and Elizabeth Pena were two typical teenage girls. They loved stylish clothes, makeup, and hanging out. Jennifer was 14 years of age while Elizabeth was 16. Though they were almost two years apart in age, they were the closest of friends. They met while both attending Waltrip High School in Houston, Texas. Thursday, June 24th, 1993 was a typical summer day for the girls. The weather was warm and the sun was out. There was a party going on at a friend's house later that evening that they both had been looking for to. Around 4.15 p.m. that afternoon, Jennifer's father drove her to Elizabeth's house. There, the girls hung out and got ready for the pool party that would be happening later. Around 8 p.m., Elizabeth's mother drove the two girls to the friend's house who was throwing the party. Both girls were excited and were looking forward to the fun, promising to be back at Elizabeth's house by 11.30 p.m. that night. As the hours ticked by and the fun of the evening died down, it was getting closer and closer to the promised time of the girls' return. They were actually running late, so both girls decided a shortcut would be the fastest way to get them home. This shortcut was along a set of railroad tracks that crossed by T.C. Jester Park. They left the tracks after a period to cut through the park itself. As you might imagine, being late in the evening, it was quite dark with little light and not many people out. Tragically, this shortcut would lead them directly to their deaths. What the girls didn't know was that there was a gang initiation going on directly ahead on the path that they were following. This gang initiation was being held for 17-year-old Raul Omar Villarreal. He had not belonged to any gang, but he wanted to join the so-called Black and White Gang, which required him to fight several of the gang members for five minutes straight before he would be judged worthy of getting into the gang or not. Raul had mostly been triumphant in fighting these gang members before he was beaten down midway through the fight. He was temporarily knocked unconscious and was left moaning on the ground while the gang discussed whether he was tough enough to be a part of them or not. After a few minutes, the leader of the gang, Peter Anthony Cantu, made the decision that he was in. He told Raul, you're in dude, you're badass, you can hang with us anytime. Afterwards, Raul sat along with the other five gang members talking, trading insults, and drinking beer. It was about this time that Jennifer and Elizabeth would come into contact with them on their shortcut home. One of the gang members, Jose Medellin, began to grab and pinch at Elizabeth's breasts. She shoved his hand away and continued walking. He then shouted, no baby, where are you going? He then grabbed Elizabeth by her neck and threw her to the ground, then proceeded to drag her down a gravel incline where the other five gang members were at. Her screams for help were made in vain. They then forced her to remove her clothes. At this point, Jennifer had a relatively decent distance between her and the gang who had begun assaulting Elizabeth, and she could have ran off, but being the great friend that she was, she instead ran to help Elizabeth. That's when the gang members, Peter Cantu and Derek O'Brien, threw her to the ground. Now this is where the story takes a pretty nasty turn, and if you're sensitive to themes of rape and murder, you may want to turn the video off. In what police would describe as a sadistic frenzy, all six gang members began to repeatedly rape both Jennifer and Elizabeth for more than an hour. They were forced to perform oral sex, they were raped and sodomized. During these repeated rapes, Jennifer and Elizabeth would look towards one another in despair and perhaps for some comfort many times throughout their ordeal. Both girls tried struggling free to no avail. Elizabeth was said to have repeatedly kicked her legs in an attempt to get the gang members away from her. It was said that Jennifer bit several of them. As described by one of the gang members at trial, Elizabeth would look towards Jennifer during one of the many rapes she suffered that night, with tears streaming down her face. Another gang member testified that by the time that he got to raping them, the girls were quote-unquote loose and sloppy. After the gang had had their fun, the seriousness of the situation dawned on them. Knowing the girls could identify him, the leader of the gang, Peter Cantu, ordered all of the members to kill both of the girls. He told the youngest gang member, 14-year-old Venicio Midland, to stay put as they dragged both girls off into a more wooded part of the park because he was too little to watch. Raul Villarreal shouted to Jennifer, get on your knees, bitch. That's when he and fellow gang member, Derek O'Brien, began strangling her with a red nylon belt. They had pulled so hard on the belt and so tightly, one on each side, that the belt broke. She was still alive, so they took her shoelaces and finished the job, all while Elizabeth was forced to watch. She must have known that she was going to be next. 
She desperately pleaded with them, trying to appease them in any way that she could, offering her phone number so that they could later hang out and get together. She took her last shot at trying to escape, but they caught her quickly. That's when gang leader Peter Cantu repeatedly kicked her in the face and her body with steel-toed boots, knocking out three of her teeth and fracturing several of her ribs. That's when Peter Cantu and two other gang members strangled her to death with probably the same shoelaces that they had just killed Jennifer with. Not wanting to leave anything to chance, the gang all took turns stomping on both of the girls' throats to ensure that they were truly dead. Gang leader Peter Cantu took any valuables that the girls had on them, mainly jewelry. Afterwards, four of the gang members went to the gang leader's house, where he lived with his brother and sister-in-law, Joe and Christina Cantu. Christina noticed blood on the group's shirts and asked Raul Villarreal why he had blood all over his shirt. That's when Jose Medellin chimed in and said that the gang had had fun and that she would soon be informed of what they did by keeping an eye on the news. He then admitted to her that he had raped two girls. The entire group seemed to enjoy bragging about their exploits. Peter Cantu divided the valuables among them. He handed Venencio Medellin Jennifer's goofy watch saying, take this, I don't want it. He then handed Jose Medellin a ring with an E on it so that he could give it to his girlfriend who at the time was named Esther. Jose stated that he had killed a girl but it would have been much easier with a gun. After the gang left the house, Christina Cantu convinced Joe, which is the older brother of Peter Cantu, to report the crime to the police. When Jennifer and Elizabeth failed to come home that night, the families began searching for them. They alerted the police and posted flyers, but the girls were not found. Now, I'm unsure how long it took Joe to actually call the police. The girls' bodies were not found until four days after the murders. They were found on June 28, 1993. Their bodies were so heavily decayed due to the extremely hot weather, dental records had to be used to identify them. In one of the more poignant moments of the entire case, Randy Ertman, which is the father of Jennifer, arrived at the crime scene. He had been speaking with TV reporters, hoping to increase the publicity surrounding his missing 14-year-old daughter and her 16-year-old friend, when one of the reporters to whom he had been speaking received word of two bodies being discovered at T.C. Jester Park. One of the cameramen agreed to immediately drive Ertman to the park. The second the cameraman had parked the van, Randy darted out of the passenger seat and ran towards the police who had cordoned off the crime scene, shouting, Does she have blonde hair? Is she blonde? Is one of them blonde? The police would not let Randy pass them, not even as the burly father frantically attempted to wrestle his way past. At sentencing, the offenders were remanded to the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. Peter Cantu, Jose Medellin, Derek O'Brien, Efrain Perez, and Raul Villarreal all received death sentences. Venencio Medellin, the brother of Jose, was 14 at the time of the murder, which is the same age as Jennifer. Venencio received a 40-year prison sentence. When the Supreme Court of the United States banned the executions of people who committed crimes while they were below the age of 18, the sentences for Perez and Villarreal were automatically commuted to life in prison. 17 years after the crimes were committed, Peter Cantu was executed on August 17, 2010. Jose Medellin was executed at 9.57 p.m. on August 5, 2008. Derek O'Brien was executed on July 11, 2006. The other three gang members are left to languish in prison where they belong. A memorial site was placed at T.C. Jester Park for both Elizabeth and Jennifer, which I thought was a very nice dedication to the memory of the girls. I'm going to end the video by including some pictures of both Jennifer and Elizabeth in happier times when they were younger and with their families. I hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to know your thoughts on it. Please comment in the comment section below. Like, subscribe. That would be great. I I would like to do more of these type of uh, crime reporting videos. So if you have a video in mind or a topic, let me know in the comments. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.